For me, it was, um, I think my early childhood was really based on, I think the, the formative thing that happened with me was um, our family building their, their first house and, and watching, uh, you know, that, uh, what do you say, like the sweat equity that goes into, um, you know, purchasing a piece of land and, and making and that. I was maybe seven, you know, seven, eight years old when, when that was coming together. So you have these kind of vivid memories of, of having the site with, without the house on it and then placing that, the, the, the house there and, and actually physically doing work in the house and, and, uh, and the stress involved and all that in the fun and, and, and then being able to live in the, spa in the space afterwards. Uh, I've always been in some way involved in construction growing up. I had uncles and cousins that were kind of formative people in my life. Um, and, and kind of seeing the, the, the hands-on aspect of architecture. And, and then you always like to draw as an architect and, and have that creative side too. So it's a, it seemed like a, um, a good match for me in terms of a profession, even though you, at, when you're a young kid, what, who, who knows what architecture actually is and, and how, that, how that works. So, you know, middle of high school, um, making that decision. And I, th I think it was more of a, um, you know, I'm originally Canadian, so, uh, uh, up in Kitchener, Ontario, just outside of Toronto, and uh, you know the school system there. You had, you kind of had to make selections before you know in the middle of high school what your electives would be going into university and stuff. So you start narrowing down what your options are. But um, you know I loved art. Uh, I think art and architecture uh, such an important uh, component, right? Uh, having a beautiful space, but having an object or a painting or something that lives inside of it is. Uh, it just it, it cranks the architecture up one more um, step. So that and the aspect of drawing and I think the uh, you know the physical commitment to it. You know when uh, early on the the construction jobs that you'd work as a young kid was literally take this pile of gravel and move it with this wheelbarrow to the backyard, right? And that was like a Saturday for me, right? Um, so uh, I think you learn. A little bit of what the the physical aspect of what it takes, and then um, and then learning the the craft of honing um, down a detail to, to really make it into something that that um, simple yet effective. And I was a total guitar, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a you know an electric guitar, which is a, was my thing. Played in a, in a band, you know. Um, but yeah, music. Uh, it's it's amazing. Uh, how much music and architecture, they, all these things, you know, mesh together. They have, uh, you know, the rhythm of, uh, of designing in a, a sequence of windows or mullions and, and how that plays into um, designing facades of buildings, the proportion of things. All that has, uh, ties back into how music plays into, uh, you know, um, into the balance of life and how that, that works out. So. It was truly a pleasure speaking with Michael from MDAS Architects. Thanks for watching AL13 Showcase, featuring architects in your city doing their best work to make your city a better livable place. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a like, tell us what you liked about it in the comments, and for more weekly content, make sure to hit subscribe.